doing scott here from scott's bass lessons hope you're well if you haven't been to the website scottsbasslessons.com yet make sure you do so straight after this video because you will find hours and hours and hours of free lessons just like this and make sure you subscribe as well we've got a special backstage area where i keep all the there's a free backing track library where you can get the backing track for this lesson plus all the other lessons as well and we've got free tutorials or exclusive member only tutorials in there as well um, about you know how to what to do when you're buying a bass, how to choose the, the right bass for you, um, how to discover the modes and how to use them on the on your instrument. Hopefully the bass if you're watching this tutorial. So go over there and check that out after this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about something uh, that I've been getting a lot of emails about over the last few months, and it's to do with phrasing your solos and how you can. What exercises I use with my students to get them to phrase in a more musical way. The gag is that when, you, you, when you're learning, you know, these licks and stuff, you know, everybody learns them, me too. You know, I, I learn licks and then try and get them in on my gigs and stuff. But the problem is that it's really hard to use them in a musical way if you've just learnt them as a lick, you know, you're just trying to plug it in almost, you know, and a lot of my students find it hard to, to sort of like kind some, find some common ground on, you know, between playing bass lines and soloing and going between the two. And it's actually a great exercise in itself. And this is what I wanted to base this lesson on. And it's something I actually was taught myself years ago. I did some correspondence study with a guy called Bruce Gertz who's a fantastic bass player, check him out online, I'm sure there's some great videos of him playing, Bruce Gertz, and he teaches at the uh, Berkeley School of Music over in Boston, he's a really, really great teacher, there's some great guys gone to him, and one of the first lessons he gave me was this lesson that I'm going to go over with you today, and it was just how to sort of like, you know, refresh your playing a little bit, and just get out of the old roots that you're in, the same old licks, try and get out of that lick kind of mentality, oh, I'm going to plug this lick in here, plug that lick in there, just try and get rid of that. And he gave me this little technique, and I can remember reading, because it was correspondence back then, he'd send me a cassette, and I'd send him back a cassette, that kind of thing, you know, old school. And I can remember reading this exercise and thinking, oh, sounds really easy. But it actually turned out to be, you know, a real sort of like breakthrough. It was really, I tried that, tried this uh, this exercise that I'm going to show you, it destroyed me. I was like, oh no, how can, why can't I do this? And it just showed me how I was relying on, you know, the same old licks and stuff like that. And I wasn't really trying to develop my fretboard knowledge. Now, it's based around a jazz blues that I've written out here for you in the key of C. A jazz blues is a great tune or a great chord sequence to learn if you're going to be going to jam sessions or you're trying to get into um, some more jazz type playing. It's a great, great sequence to learn. And you know, yeah, as I said, if you're on a jam session or something like that, this gets called a lot. You know, there's a lot of tunes based on this chord sequence. So it's a really great sequence to learn, the jazz blues. It's similar to a normal blues, but it's just got a, a, few, a few more chords thrown in there. One of my friends, Joe Philpotts, you know who you are. He calls it um, a blues in a shell suit. So. That's what it is. So what we're going to be doing for this exercise is we're going to be using or going between a walking bass line and soloing. Okay, we're just going to be going between the two. And that is how simple this exercise is, going between the two. But actually, you know, finding your way back in and back out of these soloing and walking bass sections that I'm going to, I'm going to basically section it off. 
um, is really tough if you haven't done it before. And it'll really break you free of them old licks that you've been playing for a long time. And it'll show, it'll really highlight if you've got your visualisation of your chord tones together on the neck as well. If you haven't played a walking bass line before, you can go and check out my walking bass line tutorials. They're on my website, scottsbasslessons.com. Just go to the lesson library, walking bass lines. It's there and there's some free tutorials that will get you sort of like going on walking bass lines. And once you've done that, you can come back here and check out this tutorial or keep watching, have fun, and then go check them tutorials out after this one. So what we're going to do is really simple. Just going to make sure I've got my bass turned down. To start with, I just want you to play a walking bass line over the first four bars, okay? Then I want you to play a solo over the next four bars, and then over the final four bars, back to a walking bass line. And I want you to do it twice around the sequence, okay? So the first time you'll be walking for the first four bars, soloing for the second four bars, walking for the third four bars, and then as it repeats to the top, then you'll be soloing on this section, then walking, then soloing. And then I want you to stop, okay? Um, when you're doing this, I really recommend using chord tones to start with, okay? So chord tones are arpeggios. People get confused all the time, you know, what's chord tones, what, what's arpeggios? All an arpeggio is, is a chord, as like a guitar player would play a chord. All it is, is the same thing, but played one note at a time. That's the only difference, okay? We just play it one note at a time. A guitar player plays it, plays them all, you know, at the same time. So I'm going to be using chord tones mainly. You know, I'll do a few chromatic bits here and there, but mainly it'll just be chord tones throughout the entire sequence, okay? So just to recap, I'll be soloing, I'll be walking, creating a walking bass line on the first four bars, soloing, second four bars, walking bass line on the third four bars, and then when it goes back to the top, it'll be soloing, walking, soloing, and then I'll come to a stop. And to do this, I'm just going to use a metronome on beat. Now, there is a, a backing track along with this lesson that you can, I'm going to use at the end of the lesson just to sort of like demonstrate what it sounds like with the band. But using a metronome when you practice, it's not really a time thing. I'm not really, you know, it helps with your time a bit. But what I'm doing is I'm using a metronome because I don't want to rely on anybody else, any other instruments, creating the chord changes for me. I don't want to lean on anybody to create the chord changes. The metronome is going to be there just to sort of like give me a bit of a groove to play along with, you know. It's going to be a click like that on two and four. One, two, three four, a one, two, three, four. But as I play my walking bass line and my solo, what I want to be doing is making sure that you can still hear the changes. Yeah, and you can still hear the changes because I'm using the chord tones. When you're playing with the backing track, sometimes you start relying on the instruments to create the chord changes and you, you know, just play nonsense. Using this, where you're just using a metronome and playing around a sequence like this, you've only got yourself to keep, you know, if you get lost, you've got lost. You know, nobody's there to keep you in place. So let's check that out along with the metronome. So I've got the metronome on beats two and four here, and it's just 56 beats per minute. And what I want you to do is I want you to get your metronome on, and I'm sorry, I'm just using a metronome on my iPhone. It's like a free download. If you just do a search on the App Store, you'll find it. So we've got it on beats two and four, a one two, a oh, one, two, three, four. And we just want to, you know, settle into the groove, listen to the metronome to start with and see if you can find that groove. If you can make a metronome groove, you can make anything groove. So you want to make sure you're feeling that groove with the metronome before you just kick in and go for, you know, go for it. Just make sure you can sit on that metronome, just clicking your fingers, two, three, four. So we're going to be doing four bars of walking, Four bars of soloing, four bars of walking, then four bars of soloing, four bars of walking, hopefully, and then four bars of soloing. And that should take us to the end twice round, okay? So one, two, walking, one, two, three, four. So 
soloing. Walking. Walking. Here we go to the top again and soloing. So hopefully there you can see how I'm, I'm, I've just got these sections and I'm, you know, walking, soloing, walking, and this completely demolished everything I, when I started doing this exercise, it just completely changed the way I had to view harmony on the neck. I just thought, wow, I really need to know how to, you know, one, create a walking bass line, but two, how to, when I'm soloing, just not using licks. I need to actually be able to visualize my arpeggios on the fingerboard so I can you know view them. I'm just going up and down the arpeggios there, but it just made it plainly obvious that I wasn't really playing in a in a whole way. I just kind of had I had all these cool licks. You know, and I can remember going to a few guys for our lessons and I'd, and I'd, you know, get the guitar out of the bag and, you know, or the bass out of the bag and they'd say, oh, you know, and they'd hear, hear me warming up, you know. You know, it didn't mean anything. They were like, wow, you know, you can really play. And I couldn't actually, I just had some cool licks. It was when I got onto exercises like this that I was completely demolished. I was like, wow, I really need to sort of like, you know, get these chord tones together on the neck. So really look into your arpeggios. This is how you're going to make this thing work. And also, you can anticipate as well the solo sections. So you could do a walking bass line and then start anticipating the solo, go into the solo, anticipate the walking. So you're getting more, you know, you're flowing into the solo a little bit more. So it'd be sort of like a two, three, a four, F7, C7. Here we go with the anticipation. And then walk in there. Kind of went back into the uh, the walking around here, I think. There, but you get the idea. You're trying to anticipate before you go into it. It really gets you playing together. Now for the next exercise, exactly the same, but I want to cut the spaces down even shorter. So we're going to do. Uh, let's do walking, walking. So I'm just going to do that walking, soloing, walking. Get a little W in there. Soloing, walking. Hopefully, hopefully I'll still be able to do this. <laughs> soloing, and then back to the. So I'm doing two bars of walking, two bars of soloing, two bars of walking, two bars of soloing. And what this does, and I should say that. When I did this, it really, it did a lot for my playing, but one thing it really did is it kind of blurred the lines between soloing and walking bass. I always had, oh, this is walking bass, this is soloing, okay? And it's actually not like that, you know, it's just, you should be trying to interact with everybody around you all the time. So if you want to play a really interactive walking bass line, this, these exercises gave me the chance to do that. Um, I'll talk about it after this exercise. Let's do this exercise first. So I'm just going to get the metronome. Again, 56 beats per minute. Settle into the groove, remember. Okay, so let's try walking. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Walking, soloing, walking, 
Duncan. Soloing. Walking. Soloing. Walking. Soloing. Walking. Soloing. So I'm going back and forth, so it's really hard to uh, say it and play it at the same time. Let me just stop that. Um, that I'm going back and forward. And, and as I said, just before I started playing that, it began to blur the lines between walking. So my walking lines went from just sounding like, which is cool sometimes, you know, this is what you want a walking line to be like sometimes. Went from this, you know. To this kind of thing, yeah. So it just made it a lot more interactive, you know, I could mess around a lot with what other guys were doing. If they were riffing off something, I could join in with them. I kind of, I overcooked the pudding there a bit, you know, <laughs> at the points I was just soloing. But you get what I mean, I kind of sort of like drifted in and out and I had the ability to do so. And this exercise will really sort of, you know, supercharge that. It's a tough exercise though, I've got to warn you, you've got to take it easy because when I first started doing this, it literally just demolished me, I just couldn't do it. So just, you know, learn your arpeggios. What I would say is just a closing note, is maybe try doing it within a position. So maybe try, you know, the first five frets, for instance, to start with. And then maybe move it up to this area. Yeah, and then move it up. And you know, you know what I'm saying, kind of don't leave any, so, any stone unturned. Make sure you can visualize them arpeggios all over the neck and it will really, really supercharge your bass playing. So hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have, make sure you go to the website straight after this. You can download the backing track that you're gonna hear me play within a minute. I'll be playing these exercises. It's completely for free. Just shoot over there and it's in the backstage area that you'll find. Take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.
Thank you.